What's going on guys? Dan here with the Regular Guy Garage. What I'm doing is getting all of the prep work done while the engine is outside of the car before I actually put it inside the car. This is a 5.3 LS iron block that was bored out to a 5.7. So we still have the 5.7 LS engine going back in the car, except it's an iron block so it's stronger. The problem is with, uh, with the iron block uh, truck series engine, they're actually a little bit different on the front. There's small differences between each engine, though most of the main components switch over. There are some things that actually need to be modified. So as you can see here, this is the alternator bracket. It sits on the bottom. On the LS1, it has a bolt, hole, the bolt holes here, and then there's also a third one here. The problem with this block is it has the bolt hole at the bottom, but it doesn't have one up here, and then it's missing uh, one of the bolt holes there also. The third bolt hole, not very worried about, but we need to get at least two. This is a non-important chunk of the block, so what we're gonna do is, I have it already kind of set up, I'm gonna mark this, I'm gonna set it up so I can basically put it to where I need to drill it. So I'm gonna tighten this down, mark it, and then go ahead and uh, try and drill and tap that out to be able to get this bolt to fit in it. And if, as long as I have two bolts on here, it'll be okay. Uh, the bracket will hold per perfectly fine. Tons of people have been doing it. All right guys, so I have my drill bits here. Uh, one thing of advice when you're gonna be drilling into uh, iron or steel or anything, it's a lot different than drilling into say wood, obviously, or, or plastic or anything. If you don't know, when you actually drill through iron, some of the smaller bits, you can run them through faster, you can run a higher speed. But when you get to some of the larger bits, you have to slow the speed down. Otherwise, either one, you're gonna wear the bit out or break it. Worst case, break it inside the actual hole that you're drilling, which then means you have to drill it out and extract it. And from my years of working in a machine shop, I don't wanna have anything to do with any of that. So I'm gonna take my time here, make sure I have all my holes marked right. I have a very small drill bit to start and then a quarter inch after that. And then I have my actual drill bit with the tap that I need. Oh, and one other thing, you wanna use lubricant, any kind of lubricant. I mean, WD-40 is better than nothing, uh, but I would get something that's a little bit thicker that'll help cutting. Plus, even when, you, when you're when you drilling and you spray it on the actual drill bit itself, it's gonna cool the tip of the bit off and keep it from breaking. All right, so now that I have it set up, what I'm actually gonna do is, I have some leftover assembly lube. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little dab on the end of this bolt here which is the bolt that's gonna be going in. I have this bolt hand tight enough to where I have the bracket to where I want it or where it's gonna go. And then all I'm gonna do is take this bolt and try and run it straight as possible through and mark. So that's about where I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and take my bracket off. Mark should be there. You can't see it, but it's there. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and, and center punch the spot where you're gonna start drilling. It's gonna make starting your drill bit so much easier. It's not gonna to wanna to walk around, it's just gonna drill straight in. And for those wondering, this is some sort of mosquito repellent band. It's not like some fashion statement that I'm trying to make. Or maybe it is. All right, ready to go. After you drill the hole, you have to actually put threads in it, so we're gonna tap it with this tap right here. So the tap, this tap set came with an actual uh, drill bit that was sized for this, so you have to have the correct drill size, and then you go ahead, stick it in the hole, and obviously turn it. When you're tapping threads, you wanna be very slow and methodical. You wanna get it started, go back and forth. It's, it takes a lot of patience. If you break this tap off inside, it is really hard to get out. Be slow, use a lot of oil, and you won't have any problems. Now they sell a tool that goes over the top of it. I don't have that, plus I've done it a million times, so I'm just gonna use an adjustable wrench. This one's nice, it's got the, it actually already has it, so it'll start the thread straight. And you see how I have that back and forth motion? That's really key to tapping threads. You can't just keep going. You have to actually, what you're cutting, you have to kind of break it off. Every now and again too, pull the tap all the way out. 
and clean it off, oil it. If you start to feel it stick really hard, don't force it, you're gonna break it. All right, as you can see, we got some threads now, so we can go ahead and uh, see if that bracket fits. All right, so it fits. Um, I drilled the hole just a little bit too short, so I'm just gonna get a washer and stick it on the end of this. It'll be perfectly fine. But yeah, that's an easy way. Like I said, this third bolt hole, it's not, you know, obviously all bolt holes are important, but we need at least these two to get the alternator on. And, uh, you know, we can live without this one for now. They do sell a bracket that can move the alternator up towards the head, but honestly, that's like 170 bucks. And the whole, you know, couple drill bits was like $15 with the tab. So uh, I try to save money where I can, and this will work perfectly fine. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. Really just wanted to highlight some techniques on drilling and tapping. Uh, I didn't video the whole tapping process because it takes a while. You have to be very slow, very methodical, and just be careful you don't break off that tap inside that hole. Um, but as you can see, I mean, as long as, uh, you know, do a little research, get the right tools, and you can make the parts that you have, you know, you can modify stuff to make it fit. Um, and that's kind of what, kind of what my channel is all about, is just, you know, Regular dudes, I know some guys call it shade tree mechanics or whatever. I don't think I'm shade tree because I try not to, uh, you know, cut corners or anything like that. I try and do everything the right way, but I just have a limited amount of resources. I mean, which is fine. Uh, hopefully one day I have a you know nice actual garage um, with some, you know, maybe a lift or something that I could actually use to work on. But uh, anyway, I uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. I uh, hope you like it. Hope you learned something. Uh, if you like the video, be sure to give it a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Uh, a lot more to come, and take care. We'll see you on the next one.